Well, thank you all for attending this session today. Um, do let me know if you can't hear me or if something goes wrong. Um, let me start by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you from Kingston, Ontario, which is situated on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and the Huron-Wendat. Thank, thank these nations for their care and stewardship of these shared lands. I'd also like to apologize in advance for my voice. I'll do my best, but we'll take breaks to sip water as needed. So let's get started. In this session, we'll be taking a high level look at research data management for reproducibility. When tackling something as complex as research data management and reproducibility, you sometimes have to zoom out to see the big picture. So instead of getting into the details of specific best practices or disciplinary approaches to reproducibility, I thought we'd take a broader look at the developments and directions in this important aspect of research. So what we're going to cover is some background, including a bit of history, an exploration of the concept of reproducibility, a look at challenges and benefits, how we can apply the FAIR principles to achieving reproducibility, and a brief look at future policy directions. Here's a cartoon that illustrates one aspect of the problem that we're addressing. Don't worry. You don't have to start your code from scratch. You can reuse the software that the previous person on the project wrote several years ago. Are there instructions? I doubt it. Is the code commented? Not likely. Where are the files? Who knows? This is going to be painful, isn't it? Just a scratch. The key goal of research data management is to make reuse of data, code, and documentation as painless as possible. We live in a world of evolving research practices with research taking place in vivo, with real living organisms, in vitro, in test tubes and petri dishes, and now increasingly in silico. And nowhere is this more true than in the context of high performance computing being used for computational and data intensive research across nearly every discipline. The National Academies of Science in 2019 defined reproducibility as obtaining consistent results using the same input data, computational steps, methods, code, and conditions of analysis. The need for reproducibility applies to all aspects of in silico research, from collection of data in the lab or field or instrumentation through intermediate data structures, computational hardware, to open code and statistical analyses, and finally, publication. And it applies to a wide variety of disciplines. In the early 1990s, a geophysicist named John Clairbutt launched the reproducible, re reproducible research movement sparked by increasing use of computational workflows for analyzing data across a range of disciplines. He argued that minor mistakes in code can lead to serious errors in interpretation and reported results. Clairbutt's proposed solution was to establish an expectation that data and code be openly shared so that results could be reproduced. Clairbutt posited that a revolution in education and technology transfer follows from the marriage of word processing and software command scripts. In this marriage, an author attaches to every figure, a cap, every figure caption, a push button or name tag usable to recalculate the figure from all of its data, parameters, and programs. And went on, perhaps naively, to state that preparing such electronic documents is little effort beyond our customary report writing Mainly, we need to file everything in a systematic way. Well, I suppose if only that were true. Claire Butt and his colleagues went on to build a CD-ROM-based resource designed to merge publications with underlying com computational analysis, preserve the local software environment, provide push-button recalculation, merge and link multiple electronic documents, and export documents to facilitate reproduction by others. They too naively thought that the CD-ROM at 680 megabytes is so large 
we have room for many executable programs on popular brands of workstations. So if not, even if not in terms of storage, these features may make you think about tools that we have to address this challenge today. In fact, these researchers were quite prescient, anticipating many of the features of web pages and modern electronic research platforms such as Jupyter Notebooks, which the naming of which was inspired by the work of Galileo and his carefully documented observations of Jupiter and its four moons, documentation that has survived more than 400 years. We can only hope that our modern efforts will fare as well in comparison. David Donahoe and others at Stanford University learned of Clairbout's methods in the early 1990s and began adopt, ad adopting and later promoting them. In 1995, these scientists wrote, reproducibility requires having the complete software environment available in other laboratories and the full source code available for inspection, modification, and application under varied parameter settings. They also paraphrased Clairbout's earlier assertion that an article about computational science in a scientific publication is not the scholarship itself. It is merely advertising of the scholarship. The actual scholarship is the complete software environment, development environment and the complete set of instructions which generated the figures. Whitaker's matrix of reproducibility defines different types of re reproducibility with research being seen as reproducible if the same data run against the same code produces the same results. Replicable if different data using the same code produces the same results robust if the same data applied to different code generates the same results, and finally generalizable if different data run against different code produces the same conclusions. The first of these is termed bit re reproducibility, and the rest of these are termed con conclusion reproducibility. We can simplify this to say that research is reproducible if the same data and the same methods produce the same results. And research is replicable if new data and or new methods in an independent study produce the same findings or conclusions. It is interesting to note that these terms are used differently in practice, with some areas of research making no distinction between these terms and others treating them quite differently. A researcher named Barba in 2018, did a literature review to see how a sampling of scholarly articles made use of these terms and produced an interesting grouping of research articles by these categories. Identifying these articles by discipline, an interesting picture emerges. I'm not sure if these results surprise you, but I was somewhat gratified to see that the majority of disciplines fall into the more rigorous, but perhaps harder to achieve, reproducibility category in the middle. I found it interesting as well that scientific computing and computational biology landed in the middle camp, the reproducibility camp, while computer science was in the replicability camp. In 2015, one group of scientists reported that they tried to replicate 100 psychology studies and found that they couldn't reproduce the results of two thirds of them. They also wrote, that in the studies they could replicate, the results were not as stark as the original authors had claimed them to be. In 2016, another team tried to reproduce 18 economic studies published in two leading journals and failed to replicate seven of them or roughly 40%. And finally, in 2018, attempts were made to replicate 21 social science papers published in Nature and Science to find again that almost 40% were not reproducible. And here too, in both cases, there was evidence that the original findings may have been overstated. And somewhat alarmingly, the study found that the papers that researchers could not replicate had been cited 153 times more than those that could. There were also no changes in this positive citation trend, even after it was made known that these studies could not be replicated. Turning to computer science, 
code from 68% of articles in one study could not be made to run within 30 minutes. I'm not sure how realistic this arbitrary time limit is in practice, but it is oddly satisfying to me that 32% of the cases this bar was met. In a second study, 77% of the articles under review could not be reproduced. Given that publishing academic papers, not good data management, was, was and still is the primary currency of academic advancement as measured by promotion and tenure, it should perhaps not be surprising that a 2002 checklist for writing academic research articles makes no mention of managing and providing access to data, metadata, or code that underpins research and supports re reproducibility. I'm happy to report, however, that some research that I've done indicates that progress has been made in this regard. Here, for example, are eight reproducibility checklists dating from 2014 to 2022. The U.S. National Science Foundation reports that failure to replicate can occur for a number of reasons. The first, first is that the first study's methods may, be, may have been flawed and no relationship exists between the variables. The second study's method may have been flawed in other instances, so did not confirm a true relationship between variables found in the first. And the two studies may in fact align, but sampling variation might mask statistical significance in the second study. And finally, the methods or conditions in the second study may have been different. There might have been a mismatch in key elements needed for replication, or there may have been challenges related to the lack of best practices for replication in the original study. For HPC, these challenges include the cost of repeating computationally intensive research being high, software stacks evolving quickly, HPC systems decommissioned every few years, HPC resources are allocated competitively, discouraging replication. Processes run on different computers can yield different results. Data and or software can be proprietary or otherwise restricted. Software that supports reproducibility may not perform as well in proprietary alternatives. And finally, code changes in data post-processing steps may be poorly documented. But there are real benefits to overcoming these challenges increased transparency, improved training, verifying and building upon reported findings, improved research methods, complying with journal and funder policies, enhancing reputation of research and researchers, preserving a complete scientific record, and reducing duplication. The Research Data Alliance is an international organization dedicated to improving research through good data management. In their 2021 report, Challenges of Curating for Reproducible and Fair Research Output, they state, computational reproducibility is the ability to obtain consistent computational results using the same input data, computational steps, methods, code, and conditions of analysis. They go on to say, as a means of communicating scientific claims, Computational reproducibility is imperative for verifying and building upon findings, for preserving a complete scientific record, and for advancing pedagogy. And they state, somewhat ominously, at present, this standard is rarely achieved. The Research Data Alliance has taken steps to define and address this reality. In this illustration of a typical research workflow, we see the collection of data, the use of tools, often computers, creation of documentation, and development of code, all leading to the generation of results or conclusions. The Research Data Alliance refers to these elements as reproducibility file bundles, or for short, a research compendium. 
Curators look at the research compendium for two primary reasons. First, to assess whether the contents of the research compendium are sufficient to achieve reproducibility, which is the topic of this talk. And second, to ensure the quality of the contents meet fair principles sufficiently to support long-term archival presentation, which is far more of an RDM specialist's uh, area of concern. They call this process cure for fair, or they shorten it up to cure fair. This document goes on to map curation challenges onto the FAIR principles themselves. <clears throat> In terms of findability, this governing principle is concerned with the ability to unambiguously identify the data, software, workflow, or other digital objects required for reproducibility. The challenges in the HPC world include difficulty finding data, difficulty finding software, or a complete lack of software and data citation. In terms of accessibility, the main issue is the ability to retrieve a working version of data, software, workflow, or other digital objects required for reproducibility. The challenges include data, software, workflow, and digital, digital objects not being available due to prior to proprietary software, high cost of archiving, lack of a persistent identifier or PID, a repository no longer existing, dependencies and or altered computing environments. Interoperability speaks to the data, software, workflows, and other digital objects not being as portable as needed to work in other computing environments. And finally, in terms of reusability, we're looking at situations where there is little or no documentation, code is not executable or not running as intended, code is obsolete or written in a different language or format, incompatible, incompatible software versions and or operating systems and user license licenses being absent or unclear. Many of these challenges can be addressed by RDM best practices. And primary among these is, in my mind, good documentation. Fundamentally, making fair, making data fair depends heavily on providing good documentation upstream of sharing. And much work has been done to analyze and frame best practices for producing good documentation or metadata as part of a complete research compendium. One good example of this is the list of 10 cure fair things proposed by the Research Data Alliance. This list provides guidelines for producing good research compendium that includes high quality documentation. This list will certainly be of use to data curators and information professionals who are often the first reusers of the research compendium and who work to verify the reproducibility of expected results. But this list could and frankly should be also of interest to researchers, publishers, editors, reviewers, research support staff, and others who have a stake in creating, using, sharing, publishing, or preserving reproducible research. Let's take a look at these 10 things. Does the research compendium contain everything needed to reproduce a predefined outcome in an organized and parsimonious way? So the first thing they say in this grouping is completeness. The research compendium contains all of the objects needed to reproduce a predefined outcome. The second is organization. Is it easy for a secondary user to understand and keep track of the various objects in the research compendium and their relationship over time? And the third is economy. Fewer extraneous objects in the compendium mean fewer things that can break and require maintenance over time. Is it descriptive information about the research compendium and its components available and easy to understand? And this speaks to transparency. The research compendium provides full disclosure of the research process that produced the scientific claim and documentation, which is a recurring theme in this talk. Information describing the compendium objects is provided in enough detail to enable independent understanding and use of the compendium. Is information about how the research compendium and its components and how the components can be used available and easy to understand? And this speaks to access. 
is it's clear is it clear who can use what how and under what conditions with open access preferred and provenance the origin of the components of the research compendium should be noted and how each has changed over time must be evident is information about the research compendium and its components embedded in code so metadata are important which is sort of analogous to to documentations but just different different uh different look at it information about the research compendium and its components is embedded in a standardized machine readable code and automation as much as possible the computational workflow is script or workflow based so that the workflow can be re-executed using minimal actions and there's a consistency that comes with that kind of action and finally, is there a plan for reviewing the research compendium to ensure it meets fair and computational reproducibility standards over time? And review includes a series of managed activities needed to ensure continued access to and functionality of the research compendium and its components for as long as necessary. And that speaks to one of the curation um, activities, which is to decide how long you're going to keep a particular data set and the research compendium associated with it. I pulled these together into one slide for your convenience if you end up downloading this presentation. So there they all are on one slide. Let's move on to the policy aspect of reproducibility. For this, I will quote the late great comedian, John Panette, who once observed that salad is not a food. Salad is a promissory note that food will soon arrive. In, a 2015, in 2015, a U.S. National Science Foundation, or NSF, report asserted that scientific knowledge is cumulative. The production of each empirical finding should be viewed more as a promissory note than a final conclusion. So in my view, we should start viewing academic articles as explicit promissory notes that an associated research compendium exists, is available, and is sufficient to support reproducibility. The same report presented nine policy-related recommendations to support reproducibility. I particularly like the first of these recommendations that demanded detailed document documentation be deposited and accessible. But additionally, that proof of this be provided in a final report and importantly, in any future funding applications. Trust but verify. The remaining recommendations address a range of policy issues with a recurring theme of providing funding for research into how to support reproducibility and make research better. These include funding research on replicability, encouraging reporting of different metrics to assess statistical significance. And this speaks to the issue of p-hacking and other, other um, nefarious activities that happen in the statistical world. Funding research on generalizability of findings, and that speaks to the Whitaker matrix of reproducibility. Fund research on optimal and minimal statistical reporting standards to facilitate meta-analysis. Fund research on bad research behaviors and how to address them. Require grant applicants to fully describe statistical approaches, alternate analytical approaches, and other hypotheses considered. Fund research to document suboptimal practices, to call them out and affect change. And finally, create an NSF-wide expert committee to monitor and address issues of reproducibility. In Canada, we have the tri-agencies RDM policy, which requires data management planning, a process that touches on many of the best practices we'd like to see adopted more, as well as a requirement to deposit data, code, and documentation in a recognized repository. But we would benefit, I think, from following the example of our American cousins in finding further policy mechanisms for supporting 
and advancing research data management and reproducibility in research. And to return, to return to the forest and trees metaphor, if you're interested in zooming in on more detail regarding RDM and reproducibility, I would encourage you to take a look at a workshop curating data sets for reproducibility put together by Chin Zhang, Sandra Sachak, and Shahira Kerr. You can find this material in GitHub at the address shown. And I would also consider looking at reproducibility checklists I mentioned earlier in my talk. I look forward to continuing the conversation as we work together to ensure adoption of good research data management practices to advance the creation of research compendiums in support of research and in support of reproducibility. <laughs>